Do y'all hear that? Do you hear the drizzle outside the door? It's currently raining outside in Florida. Like we literally are under hurricane watch. Like, oh my God. Okay, it's happening. Everybody stay calm. What's the Everybody procedure, stay everyone? Calm. What's the procedure? Stay calm. Wait, 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 wait. Everybody just calm down. And here I am doing what I love. What is up you guys? Welcome back to my YouTube channel. So for today's video, I'm starting off with absolutely no makeup on. I know this is my bare skin. It's come such a long way and I feel like one of my most frequently asked questions is for me to sit down and film a how I cleared my acne video and I will sit tight. I am working on that video. It's not going to be anything too special. It's not going to have all these bells and whistles. It really is just going to be a sit down talk through video about what I did to clear my acne. So it is coming very, very soon. In the meantime, I really wanted to sit down and do my makeup. I wanted to test out some hot new products. I have a bunch of products sitting in a bin, so I pulled out products that I was very, very excited to play with. I have the new Rouge Romance palette, the blush palette by Jaclyn Cosmetics. We have some things from Makeup by Mario. I have the Four Eyes eyeshadow palette by Patrick Ta Beauty. So we're gonna play around today. Let me know your thoughts on these products, if you have tried them or if you have any tips for me using them in the future. I would love that. I love to have a little conversation in these first impressions videos. So leave me anything down below in the comments. And if you guys are new here, my name is Ashley. I film beauty on a budget videos. And sometimes I like to dabble into high-end makeup and today is one of those days. So make sure you guys subscribe to my channel, like this video and turn on your post notifications. So that way YouTube will notify you when I upload, which is every Monday and Wednesday at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. With that being said, let's go ahead and zoom in and let's get started on today's look. Not gonna lie, sometimes when I sit down to film these videos, I always think long and hard about whether or not I even want to do my hair. And today's one of those days. I'm gonna kick off today's video with a little bit of primer. I've had this in my collection for a minute. This is by Too Faced. This is the Plump and Prime Luxury Face Plumping Primer Serum. I'm into it. I love the way that that sounds. So I'm just going to take a little bit onto my fingers and I'm just gonna work it into the skin. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, Too Faced Plump and Prime. We're primed. Before moving on to the eyes, I am gonna work on my brows very quickly. I will be using the Precisely My Brow Pencil by Benefit in the shade 4.5. I haven't used this in a minute, but I remember really loving it. I'm just going to draw a line directly underneath my brows. You guys know I've really been into that boy brow look, so I'm not gonna overly draw my brows. To be honest, we're just going for something, something a little light. Then I'm gonna take my NYX Lift and Snatch Brow Tint Pen, and I'm just gonna mimic like hair-like strokes within my brows to really get that boy brow look going. All right, so the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna prep my lids and prime them. I saw this in Ulta recently. This is the Shadow and Liner Primer. It's called Ultimate. It's a base from NYX Cosmetics, and I thought it was really cool and it looked promising. So I'm gonna use this to prime my eyelids for eyeshadow. If you guys hear like little tapping on the ground, it's Stormy. She can't sit still in my filming room and she's like a real child, so just ignore her. She's a cutie though. I'm gonna take more of a fluffy brush and I'm just gonna use this to tap everything out. For me, whenever I go in with eyeshadow bases, you really wanna make sure they're nice and even. Otherwise, your eyeshadow can get patchy for no reason at all. So I just like to tap it in. So a little tacky, which is nice. I'm gonna wait for it to dry down just a little bit. And then we're gonna jump into eyeshadow. Ah, I'm so excited. Okay, so this is the Patrick Ta. Four Eyes eyeshadow palette. I saw this in store and I knew instantly I had to pick it up. Look at these shades. So stunning, so gorgeous. There's also some cream shades here, which not entirely sure what I'm gonna do with, but I love that there's mattes all alongside the bottom. And then there's these really beautiful kind of like shimmery foiled eyeshadows. So we're gonna play today and see what we can come up with. So I'm gonna start off with this shade right here and I'm gonna use that as my crease color. So that's actually gripping onto the eyeshadow primer really nice. I feel like the thing that's great about a sheer eyeshadow primer like the one we just used is that it really looks like you have nothing on your eyelid and it looks like skin like right there, which I know a lot of people like. I feel like a lot of people hate eyeshadow primers because they can be a little thick and goopy, but that one's definitely not like that. 
and it is gripping onto the eyeshadow very, very nicely, and it's not getting patchy at all, so that's nice. So I am gonna switch things up a little bit, and I'm gonna take this shade and this shade here, and I'm gonna use it to kind of smoke out this outer part, and I'm just lightly gonna tap and just slowly start to build it up. Look at that. Oh wow, these blend beautifully on the eyes. But what did we really expect? I'm obsessed with like his little blush duos where it's like the cream and the powder in one. So freaking good, so. I knew this would be no exception. So what I'm doing now is I'm picking up a little bit of that transition shade and I'm just going to blend it above all the other shadows. One thing I will say about this palette is that it is very, very pigmented, but you know those eyeshadow palettes that are so pigmented that they're extremely difficult to blend out? I don't find that to really be the case with this eyeshadow palette. Like it's pigmented, but it's really, really easy to blend, which I can appreciate. So I will definitely say this palette is great for any and everyone starting out in makeup. I always like to think of palettes that aren't like so pigmented right away as being good palettes for those of you who are beginners because there's no way you can mess it up. But this is one of those palettes that's very pigmented, packs a punch all at once, but it blends out really nicely. So that's definitely a plus. And you can see the eyeshadows just blend it very nicely over top of that eyeshadow base. Nothing got patchy and it looks really, really pretty. So what I'm doing next is I'm actually picking up some of that cream on more of an angled brush. I picked these up on Amazon, by the way, if you guys are interested in the brush set that I got this brush from, I'll have it listed down below. But I'm gonna stamp it closest to my lash line to mimic liner. I'm not entirely sure if that's what this was meant for, but that's what I'm gonna use it for. And then we're gonna lay eyeshadow directly over top of it. So now I'm just gonna pick up the dark brown right next to it and I'm just gonna stamp it directly over top of the cream. I feel like the cream made it very easy to kind of just carve out the liner exactly where I wanted it. So I also feel like it could make for a really nice base. Let's say if you're doing like a really pretty blown out brown smoky eye, that would be really pretty. Now I definitely wanna smoke out this line a little bit more. So I'm gonna pick up more of that brick color and I'm gonna mix it in with the brown, go back and forth. And the brush I'm using is a Morphe M507. This is like my favorite brush to do this stuff. So if you guys don't have it, I will list it down below. I definitely feel like it's a staple in my collection. And if you wanna do something very similar to this, this is the brush you're gonna need for that. Cause it's super small and it's easy to just like blend and smoke out liner. So before moving on to my lid color, I definitely wanna take this shade right here at the very bottom. And I wanna use that as my brow bone highlight. I've really been into brow bone highlight recently. And I feel like this is so pretty. It's more of like a matte, but it has like flecks of shimmer in it. Sorry, I dropped my brush, but it has flecks of shimmer in it. So it looks really, really pretty. So instead of carving out lid space with let's say a potted concealer like I usually would, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this shade right here. It's a really, really beautiful like champagne. I'm gonna take it on a flat brush and I'm just gonna stick it in the bare area of my lid, hoping that this goes well. I'm actually gonna spray it with a little bit of setting spray to give it a little bit more slip. And then I'm just gonna pat it on. We'll see how this goes. That formula is gorgeous. I live for these formulas, you guys. Like so fun, so pretty. Look at that. Okay, so I'm now gonna take this shade here. It looks like kind of like a mid-tone brown, but it has some shimmer reflex in it. I'm gonna see if I could use that to actually save the day whenever it comes to like this area right here. I want a little bit more of like a seamless blend. So I'm gonna pick up that shade on my smaller brush just so that way I could fit it like right in here. And I'm just gonna take it and blend back and forth. Oh yeah, perfect. So for my lashes, I will be using these lashes here by Birdie Lashes. These are in the style Gemini. And what I love most about Birdie Lashes is that if you go over on Instagram, she actually has a filter. So you could actually try on each lash with like your eye look to figure out which one you wanna use for that particular day. So I'm gonna go with Gemini. I do have a code with Birdie Lashes. If you guys want to check it out, I will have it listed on the screen. But I think that these are gonna look stunning with the look. I'm gonna cut them just a little bit, nothing crazy though. And then we're gonna move on to the rest of the face. 
base. So while I wait for that lash glue to dry down, I am gonna go in with my base. I am gonna revisit this product. I know I used this a few videos back in like a first impressions video, but the shade I had was like way too dark for me. So I'm gonna go in with the shade Mykonos Medium Zero. And I'm just going to apply this as if it was like a sunscreen of some sort. So I'm just going to take a little bit. I hope that this is a good shade. And I'm gonna work it into the skin. Mm, still a little dark, but it should do the job. I do like to apply this more with my fingers than like a sponge because I feel like it gives off such a beautiful and just like natural finish. And now that I don't have acne, I feel like it's a lot easier for me to work with products like these. And I just feel like they look a lot better on my skin. So I'm really, really happy about that. I always used to see so many girls like put on like tinted moisturizers with their fingers and I low-key was so jealous because I had so much acne that there was no way in hell my skin was going to look that good applying it with my fingers. And now I'm finally at a point where I could do that and feel like 100% confident doing it. So you guys are definitely going to have to let me know your thoughts on this tinted moisturizer. Have you guys tried it? Do you like it? I do like the fact that it has SPF 30 sunscreen in it. It's not something I would recommend wearing like at night if you're gonna be taking flash photos or anything like that. But during the day, hell yeah, looks so beautiful on the skin. Now, even though my complexion looks bomb the way it is, I am gonna double up with more of a full coverage foundation. I saw Karen from I Love Set at E do this, so I really wanted to try out the technique for myself. I will have her video listed down below if you guys wanna check that out, but I'm doubling up with a little bit of the Natural Radiant Long Wear Foundation in the shade Poonja by NARS. This is one of my favorite foundations of all time. I'm gonna take some onto the back of my hand, and then I'm going to take a damp sponge, work up, some of the foundation onto the sponge and then just press it in the areas where I feel like I want a little bit more coverage. Now you can definitely see the majority of the foundation is more in the center of my face. And as I started to get to the perimeter, it just lightly starts to feather. So it didn't really add too much coverage in these areas because I do find that I just need a little bit more coverage in like the center of my face. So. I'm just lightly buffing and blending this all over. I'm not gonna go in with any more foundation. I just took a pump of it onto the sponge and now I'm just lightly tapping it all the way around so that way everything just looks nice and even because I do find that Punjab is obviously a different color than the tinted moisturizer that I went in beforehand. So I just wanna make sure my color is nice and even. So let's go ahead and move on, but let's move on to concealer. I do wanna use the new Radiant Creamy Color Corrector by NARS. You guys know for a hot minute, I was so obsessed with color correctors. So this one here is in the shade Light. I'm gonna take a little bit of this underneath my eyes to brighten, and the applicator is different. It is definitely more of like one of those brush-on applicators, at least that's what it looks like. Yeah, it definitely looks more like a brush-on applicator, which is different for NARS, but I'm not opposed to it. I'm just gonna take this here. I kind of wish it was like the same applicator as a concealer, but I kind of get it. I'm just gonna take a little bit there to brighten and then do the same to the other side. To blend it out, I'm gonna use that same blender I used to apply the foundation. Ooh. It's actually really pretty and it doesn't blend out too peach which is nice like it definitely has more of like a peach undertone because clearly it's more of a peach color corrector but it's not overly peach or like orange underneath the eyes which i like it's not going to be that hard to cover up sometimes peach color correctors can be way too orange and then i need a shit ton of concealer to cover it up i don't think that's going to be the case with this now for concealer, I am gonna follow up with the NARS Natural Radiant Creamy Concealer. The shade I'm using is Affogato Light 1.25. And I'm only gonna take a little bit of this because it's very, very light. Oh, a little bit goes a very long way, I will say, especially after going in with that color corrector. I feel like you really don't need that much concealer at all. Like my under eye area is concealed. Now another product I've been really wanting to try underneath the eyes is a brightening and setting palette by Jack and Cosmetics. And this is what it looks like. Again, I've been wanting to try this for quite some time. I just kept forgetting, but I'm gonna use this today. I'm gonna take more of the peach shade and more of like the banana shade here. And I'm just going to use my sponge 
to set everything down and in place. I'm a little nervous because I have no idea what to expect, but I heard her powders were really, really good. So we'll see what it's all about. First, I want to make sure my concealer is not creasing. So I'm just going to tap, make sure everything is nice and blended. Holy brightness, my under eye area is super bright, but it looks really pretty. So you know what? We're gonna roll with it and we're gonna move on. I do wanna use this contour stick by Makeup by Mario. This here is in the shade Light Medium and I love that it has the brush on one end and then on the other side we have the contour stick. Now. I love how practical this is, especially if you are like a freelance makeup artist, but you guys know me personally. Oh my God, you can take the brush off. You guys know me personally. I love to take my brush into the product here and then use it on my face as opposed to just drawing on the face. So I love that this is detachable. So I'm just taking this, putting it onto the brush. Oh, I'm so happy. Oh, I love that he did that. And then I'm gonna use this to just apply the product. I cannot believe he did that. Wow. Your girl's impressed. I'm super, super impressed, you guys. Wow. I will also say a little bit goes a very long way. I think I OD'd here. <gasps> no. Okay, yeah, I definitely applied way too much. Hmm. I'm gonna use a brush to buff and blend this out mainly because I just put way too much. Now I know. Just go in with a little bit. I will say it blends out really nicely though, so that's good. It just doesn't blend out nicely if you have way too much product already on your brush. So just keep that in mind if you guys are thinking of picking up that product. But I am really happy with the shade I picked up. I feel like it looks really nice with my skin tone. So far, everything is looking pretty decent. I do wanna move on though, and I wanna go in with face powder. Now, I did recently get this in PR. This is the new Can't Stop, Won't Stop Mattifying Powder by NYX Cosmetics. I have mine here in the shade medium, so I'm just gonna take a big old fluffy brush, and I'm just lightly gonna set down all the areas that I didn't use that under eye powder. And I'm just tapping, I'm not like swirling, cause I don't wanna disrupt what's underneath. So another thing I really want to try out by Makeup by Mario is a soft sculpt bronzer in the shade light medium. I thought that this was going to be a really good match for me personally. So I'm just going to pick up a little bit of it and I'm just going to amplify that cream product by just tapping a little bit of this on. I'm going to flip it over and I'm going to use a smaller side for my forehead, even though I really don't need to bronze or contour my forehead some of my mascara is like transferring to my lower lash line. Do you guys see that? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna finish off the lower lash line with a little bit of shadow. I find that that really helps kind of conceal anything that transfers. So I'm gonna take this light brown, these two right here, and I'm just going to smudge and smoke it on my lower lash line. Just connecting everything together. Yeah, I definitely feel like the mascara I use, which by the way, was a Revlon mascara. It gets really hot and humid in here and sometimes, you know, I just get transfer everywhere. If you guys know of any really good waterproof mascaras, let me know down below because I definitely want to try those out. And then I'm also going to pick up a little bit of that dark brown and then just put it right here closest to like the outer V of the lower lash line. Now I am gonna go in with a little bit of nose contour and I'm gonna take this shade within the palette and I'm gonna use it to do that because, I don't know, it just looks like it will be a pretty bomb shade for this step and I'm getting a little out of control. Nothing a little bit of face powder can fix. So let's go ahead and move on to blush because I definitely feel like that's what I'm most excited about. I do have a cream product from Jaclyn Cosmetics. I have this right here. I'm not sure. Oh, that is super pigmented. Now, usually I wouldn't go for a color like this. So I think I might use this in a different video, but I still am gonna use some of her blush products. I do wanna use the Rouge Romance 
blush palette here and I'm just going to do a cocktail of blushes and just figure out what I want. So maybe even mix these two. Now I'm not gonna go too crazy with blush because I do also have one of her loose powder blushes that I wanna put over top of this because it is more of like a luminous blush. And that was very, very intriguing to me. But look at that. That is stunning, honey. I'm gonna take just a powder brush and just kind of blend. I feel like whenever I try new makeup, it's really easy for me to get heavy handed with it. So I'm trying my best. Now I do have the luminous blush here in the shade Love Poem. It is a really beautiful color. So I'm gonna just pop this open. I'm hoping it's not too pigmented but we'll see. I've never tried anything like this before. I'm using that same Smashbox blush brush to apply it, and then I'm just going to sweep it onto the apples of my cheeks. Here's my thing. I know when she originally launched it, she used like a bunch like in conjunction with each other. I feel like it's one or the other for me personally. I feel like it's very easy to get out of control with this because it is like so many different layering of products, so. Just keep that in mind, it is really pretty. I would probably only apply like the luminous blush to the apples of my cheeks and maybe sweep whatever I have left back, but I will say they are very, very pretty and I'm like high key obsessed with the color. Another thing I really love to do whenever it comes to blushes and eyeshadow is that I'll take whatever blush color I decide to use and then I'll blend just like a little bit of it into my eyeshadow and it definitely gives me more of like a monochromatic look. So that's what I'm gonna do today. So let's talk about actual highlighter. I did pick this one up from Makeup by Mario. This is the Soft Glow Highlighter in the shade Golden. Now this is stunning, look at that. It's just like so beaming on the skin. So I'm going to take a highlighter brush. This is an ABH A23 and I'm just going to apply it as usual. So one thing I really wanna do is use the Master Secret Glow Highlighter also by Makeup by Mario. So I'm just gonna take my sponge and then just like dip it in here. The girl at Sephora was telling me about this and she's like, I love it so much. It's so great. So I'm just gonna take this and then just kind of tap it over top of the highlight. Oh, you see that's that's what I like. Like that glossy look. That is That is what I like. Not so much like the overly highlighted look Damn, am I past that? Do I need to return the golden highlight? I think I might love this a little bit more. Let's go ahead and finish off with the lips. I will be going back in with my KKW lip liner in the shade Nude 2, and I'm just gonna use this to line my lips. By the way, I do know of a spot on do for this. It is Milani Saucy Toffee. I just can't find mine anywhere for the life of me, so I'm just using this but I will have the Milani one listed down below. Since I do know that KKW lip liners have been very, very hard to get your hands on these days. To finish things off, I am gonna go in with a soft matte lip cream by NYX Cosmetics. This one is in the shade London, and I've just missed this so much. This used to be my ride or die. Look at that. Oh, such a beautiful shade. I'm just putting this all over. So I actually did try to do my hair for the purpose of the outro, but it just was not happening. It's so humid, it's like rainy outside. I mean, come on, it's hurricane season in Florida. So there's no way I'm gonna be able to like smooth and slick this out, but that's not even what this video is about. It's really about the makeup. I will say I thoroughly enjoyed the Patrick Ta Four Eyes Eyeshadow Palette. It is so good. I feel like if you are someone who just enjoys makeup, you'll really love this. If you're a freelance working makeup artist, you will love this. I feel like this is like the perfect like wedding day eyeshadow palette. I feel like so many brides always ask for something like glam, but like still really pretty. And I feel like this eye really just screams it. I also love that there's a mixture of creams in here. You can use these as liners and then take the shadow to set it, or you can use it as like a base to do more of a smoky eye. I feel like this is a very, very versatile 
little eyeshadow palette and I cannot wait to create more looks using this. Now for the rest of the face, I feel like my face definitely looks very hydrated. It looks dewy, it looks glowy. It looks really, really pretty. And I can't say too many bad things about it. I will definitely say when I was putting on the blushes from Jack and Cosmetics, like super up close and personal, I'm just like, holy shit, my face looks pink, but that's definitely not the case. I will say though, I recommend either going in with the palette or the luminous blush or either the cream on its own. I feel like layering on too many blushes is a little bit too much because these products do pack a punch. They are very, very good and very pigmented. Um, I do really love the shades I chose. I just kind of mixed these two together. And of course I use a little bit of the luminous blush and I feel like it looks really pretty. Another product that I was just blown away by is this product here. This is the Master Secret Glow Highlighter by Makeup by Mario. It is that skin gloss that I just put on in this area. It's so pretty. It gives me that dolphin wet skin look, which I'm really, really into. A product I will say is a hard pass for me personally is the Soft Glow Highlighter in the shade Golden. I don't really know what all the hype was about like yeah it is very very pretty and swatch it looks like it melts into the skin but on my face it just kind of sits weird I'm not entirely sure if it's because I have like peach fuzz on my face or what but I'm gonna try to put it on my chest and see if it gives me more of a different effect because right now it looks really really pretty but on the skin it just didn't look like this like is it just me let me know if it's just me <laughs> As for the next products I use within today's video, Soft Matte Lip Cream, Love London. Definitely go check it out. It's so pretty on the lips. Definitely not a first impressions, but I'm really glad I revisited the product and used it within today's video. As for the new Can't Stop Won't Stop Powder, I really like this powder. It's more of a mattifying powder, so it's really gonna tone down that shine, but it's not heavy like it would be like a powder foundation. So this is definitely something I can get into because I live in Florida. It's hot, it's humid. Y'all know, mattifying products, holy grail for us Florida girls. And for the eyeshadow primer, this was really awesome underneath the eyeshadow. I feel like it allowed the eyeshadow to lay very nicely on the lid without getting patchy or anything like that. I will have to test it for longevity, but so far, so good. Um, that's pretty much it. If I missed anything, I will leave it all down below in the description. So make sure you guys check that out. And if you guys want me to test out any other products, I'd love to know, leave me your recommendations all that jazz and that is pretty much it i love you guys thank you guys so much for watching today's video and until next time i'll be sure to catch you guys all on the next one deuces